up, YouTube? I'm listening to a compilation uh, put out by the Pain Fuckery, which is a magazine. Um, this is, was it issue nine, I think. Oh, this is issue number eight. These magazines that come with a with this CD with every edition. I've got quite a few of these. I uh, became familiar with them when I was with a uh, Witch Breath. I uh, actually got on one of their playlists, and I think we were going to be in the next issue. I just don't know when the, those come out. That's what I'm listening to. The band that's playing right this second actually sounds quite a bit like Megadeth. Let me see who that is. Track 12, 19 Till Dawn from USA with the song Lurking Inside. Sounds just like Megadeth. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'm here to talk about the show I went to, uh, Hoarding of Evil Vengeance, that took place in Seattle. Ended up being um, even more awesome than I had anticipated. Uh, so yeah, beyond my expectations. I got a lot of merch, uh, and I saw a lot of bands there. Uh, more bands, there was a couple surprise bands. So uh, first I want to tell you a little bit about each set, and then I will show you the awesome merch I got. So... From the top, uh, the first band that played was Fetid, F-E-T-I-D, and I believe they were a Seattle uh, local group. Uh, it was some total death, they were a three-piece. Um, speaking of, uh, well not speaking of, uh, often you know, uh, females in metal is something that kind of stands out, uh, and this is uh, one of those cases, their bass player was a girl who was just a sick bass player. Uh, of the three piece. Uh, vocals were done by the guitar player and uh, it was a total fucking death, you know, one of those bands. It was a uh, low tone, solid, um, everything you'd want from a death metal group. Uh, the next band that played was Hellfire Death Cult and if you recall I did a, a concert review from the Archgoat show which was the first time I saw a Hellfire Death Cult and um, one of the things that was outstanding from my recollection of the performance the first time was the low tone of the bass. He plays a five string bass uh, which really is like a driving force behind the overall sound of that band for me which is interesting like I was it's actually I met a guy there and uh, right before Hellfire played we were standing outside and I was talking to him about you know how I admired that low tone sound that they had that was really outstanding because of possibly you know the five string bass and everything um, the reason why I'm saying all that is because when Hellfire played, the second they started, I, I thought to myself, I can't really hear the bass. Uh, maybe like this m minute hum in the back, but I can't hear the bass. And you know, uh, he starts telling the sound guy, you know, as much as he can, like, hey, you know, like, the bass up, we need the bass up. And then, you know, second, third song, I don't remember how many, it's just still can't hear the bass. And he keeps telling him, turn the bass up. Well, eventually, you know, he's like so fed up and frustrated with it, he like takes his bass off and he throws it down on the side of the stage and he just starts singing through the mic, which I thought like, this is such a fucking metal moment. You know, it, it sucks that that's happening to this dude, but it's really making this nice intense moment. And they still sounded pretty fucking awesome with just the guitar and drums. Uh, they're Hellfire Death Cult, if you don't know who they are, they, they're like the mask dudes that play that really hateful style of war metal, borderline, really. Um, and reminds me of what I said last time, it's a lot in the vein of, like, Neonctibalist type of things. Uh, which was an interesting comparison that I made last time. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, the next band that played was Mortiferum. I actually missed the first half of their set, but by the time I came back in, uh, they were fucking killing it. It was another total fucking death. Very impressive. Uh, as far as I understand, they were also a Seattle local group. I could be wrong about that, but I believe they were. I didn't really know a lot about what was going on, like I said, because I missed about the first half of their set. But it was fucking sick. Total fucking death. The next band that played, band number four, was Torture Rack. Um, uh, of the bands I didn't know of that I discovered that night, I'd say that Torture Rack is my favorite. Fucking... Uh, just another just total fucking death the singer plays bass and does vocals and maybe it was just because he was wearing a t-shirt with uh, uh, Michael Myers on it but it really felt like this really horror inspired death metal 
And I also had this like fucking meat hook hanging from the side, and it just felt like fucking brutality. Uh, you know, that stage presence really helped me get into that sound that, they, that Torture Rack had. And I'm an instant fan of the band Torture Rack, which, again, I, I think they were another local group. Uh, aside from all the local groups, there was a lot of bands there from Texas, uh, specifically the Houston scene, like uh, the next group that played, Oath of Cruelty. Uh, of course, this is uh, an affiliation of my friend uh, Matt Hefner, who is a phenomenal drummer uh, in so much of the extreme metal scene, uh, but he plays drums in Oath of Cruelty, and the vocal vocalist slash guitar player of the group, uh, you may know him from his old project, Pretty Little Flower, which is like a grindcore project, but anyway, Oath of Cruelty was probably one of the most solid sounding groups of the night. Uh, and I, like one of the ones that really like uh, it was more than I expected. I, I don't I don't know. I mean I guess that sounds like I had low low expectations. I mean that's not it at all. But it was just a tight sounding group. It was like some some thrashy fucking borderline war metal again. But I mean I don't not war war metal to where it's like that wall of noise because it's not that at all. It was really well constructed and um, you can make out like what's going on and stuff. But it just felt fucking like intense and it's just that death metal that I'm just fucking feeling it it was like real thrashy and aggressive I fucking loved it uh so yeah Oath of Cruelty was fucking sick I love it and of course anything that um those guys touch is gonna be fucking phenomenal uh everybody in that band the second guitar player was also uh a member of Blasphurian I believe and other bands uh, and watch the next band that played was Blasphurian, which is the band I was the most excited to see, and the band I picked up the most merch from as well. Uh, first merch table I hit was theirs. Um, and yeah, so Blasphurian comes out, and just what was really made me happy instantly about their set was I was hoping that they would play the song Lies of the Cross. And sure enough, right out the gate, that was their opening track, Lies of the Cross. And I was just fucking like, yes, yes, I didn't even have to fucking scream for them to play that song like I was intending. Like, I want to hear that song. They fucking played it right out of the gate. And they were just, I mean, they sounded better live than they do on the recordings. It's one of those bands you've got to go fucking see. It just blew me away. Um, it's just aggressive. It's death metal that's just dripping in the blood of fucking Christ. You know, this total, like, slaughter of all things Christian, but done in a death metal fashion. Absolutely outstanding. I fucking love Blasphemian. The next band that played, and then this one caught me off guard, and I'm not the only one that caught a fuck ton of us off guard. Nyog the Bliss. So, I didn't even know they were going to play. Like, uh, I went out, like, in between bands, I was walking out to my car, you know, burning one or whatever, and then they come back in, and, uh... The guitars are up, and then out steps some masked dudes. Who is this? I thought Imprecation was about to play. And all of a sudden, you know, he, he like, they play some very Nyog sounding tracks, and I was thinking to myself, is this Nyog the Blues right now? Because, you know, they're all masked and stuff, but it sounds just fucking like them. And then he calls out the second song, uh, was it, uh, the bioterroristic, uh, what, what was the name of their, their latest record, the bioterroristic holocaust or something like that. You know their names are fucking long. But I was like, that is definitely a Nyogdobly song title. And then here's some more Nyogdobly, so it's gotta be what I'm watching right now. And, you know, the reaction of the crowd members kind of confirmed it for me. That's what's happening. And their sound was one of the most hateful, one of the most evil sounding things I've ever seen live. It was very intense. I was, I fucking loved it. And uh, the reason why I was saying with Hellfire Death Cult was it's funny that I compared their sound to Nyog the Bliss because at this show, coincidentally, now I'm seeing those two bands, you know, paired on a set list, which was a great fucking bonus. So yeah, Nyog the Bliss caught me off guard and it was fucking sick. Uh, they were a three-piece, in case you don't know. They were a three-piece, there was a drummer, uh, I guess was a bass and a guitar, and then both of the guys with guitars in their hands. Uh, also had a microphone that were like running through synthesizers, like this foot pedal, the one guy was kind of running it to kind of give all that echo and delay and stuff to their vocals, which was fucking amazing. So there's two more bands that played, I know, this is a lot of fucking bands. So the next, Imprecation comes out. Fuck, they kill it, dude. So fucking good. I'm really happy that they played right before the actual headlining band, uh, because they are 
they're just some top-notch fucking rockers, dude. Uh, it was, the music was, you know, the really tight fucking pounding death metal, aggressive fucking death metal, but the vocals that David Herrera's got, dude, it is the most fucking blasphemous, disgusting, fucking foul, aggressive. I fucking love the lyrics he's got, and, and the deliver, like, his delivery of those fucking lyrics, like, that, that is a solid fucking good fucking front man. That is a good fucking solid fucking death metal band. And I, I always love the fucking, the high dose of blasphemy, you know, in which this is a total fucking overdose straight to the vein of blasphemy, uh, imprecation. And uh, some, some of the merch I got with them on it uh, makes me really, really fucking happy. Uh, so anyway, the, the headlining band of the night, Blood, who, Blood, at this, so at this point, it's midnight when Blood goes on. I think they play from, like, midnight till about one. Uh, and Blood, I ha actually, like, I hadn't heard of Blood previous to this show, and uh, kind of just reviewed a little bit of their music online real quick, you know, before the night. And uh, so I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, I missed the, fr the opening song of them when I came in. I think they were on, like, the second track. I I'm guessing it was pretty, like, just started kind of timing but what I noticed with blood over all these other bands is blood had control of that fucking crowd they were I mean I don't know if it was just because of the majority of the people there are these longtime devoted blood fans that are finally for the first time ever getting to see this band in America you know so it might have been driven by that but I think it's more of just this guy's years of experience shining through uh, to be able to have absolute control of the crowd and put on an amazing show. Um, they were a death metal group, very much death metal with uh, grind. I wouldn't say total grind core because that makes me think of more just a, you know, two second song that's just fuck, which the, the aspect of grind that they have is more the fact that the songs are really short uh, and they are extremely intense and over the top. But I mean, they got a drummer that's playing more uh, realistic uh, drumming, not just um, a drum machine with the BPMs cranked up so high. It's humanly impossible. I mean, they were a tight group, and um, the guitar player, the lead guitar player, fucking does these mind-blowing fucking solos to keep it all rocking, and their vocalist looks so much like Rob Halford. Well, the way Rob Halford looked when he was younger, not so much the way Rob Halford looks today, uh, even though that these guys are a bit older, um, maybe even, uh, I'd, I'd guess about 10 years younger than Rob Halford, the man himself. So anyway, that was the end of the night. Uh, it fucking rocked. I was so happy to see my buddy Matt, and uh, to hang out with everybody and see so many great bands. To have the opportunity to see Nyak the Bliss because I know it's kind of a challenge for them to put shows on these days, unfortunately, due to those bastard Antifa people. Uh, anyway, so let's, uh, let's get into the merch I got. Uh, the first thing I did, so like I said, the first spot I hit was the Blasphurian table. Uh, I got over there and um, uh, saw that they had a bunch of stuff and you know, I checked prices. Cause you know I had a you know price limit. I'm not unlimited funds, and so I was like I wanted to get everything I don't already have. So first things first. So you remember last time I showed you I had one seven inch. Uh, so I picked up this seven inch from them. This is a a really nice gatefold seven inch uh, titled Upon the Throne. I really like the artwork on the cover. Uh, and you got your lyrics, uh, thank you list, which is a really good thank you list to look at uh, for some band references and stuff. I know I, I think it was a. The latest episode of Hellcast was talking about that. This is one of those great scenarios. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Hellcast, too, uh, you're missing out on a lot of great heavy metal entertainment. Uh, so it's got this nice little fold-out poster with the artwork and the kind of band shot there, kind of CGI'd in between that. And that's just a really nice fucking poster. You don't you don't often you don't often see seven inches in gatefolds, and you especially don't often see seven inches that include the posters. And it's just on black vinyl. Uh, I don't know if there's a color variant of these that were put out. I like that it's side six and then side six six <laughs> with the same artwork again. But I like that it's six and six six. And yeah, and the songs on here are fucking great. Uh, like everything with Blasphurian, it's blasphemous fucking death metal. It's fucking gorgeous <laughs> in its own sense. Uh, gorgeous like uh, in the way that Ed Gein would view the skin of his mother's corpse. It's beautiful like that. Uh, so yeah, that was Blasphurian upon the throne, a sick fucking 7-inch. Uh, I got another 7-inch. This is the split uh, Blasphurian put out with the band In League with Satan. 
Uh, I wasn't previously familiar with In League with Satan, but now that I've listened to it, I know that they're a little bit more of the wall of noise style of band, uh, to where his Blasphemian actually has a little more uh, outstanding melody. Uh, I say that with, uh, you know, uh, using the term lightly, of course. Uh, let's put out their Iron Bonehead, uh, and also, um, what is this, uh, Blasphemous Art Productions? But yeah, you'll notice in the band photo how uh, In League with Satan kind of has gas masks and stuff on. That always kind of hints at a little bit of what they're going to sound like. And, uh, well, often does. And Blasphemy, of course, having their blasphemous toes as usual. And again, there's really nice artwork on this. Uh, both bands' song is great. Unrepentant was a song that actually uh, Blasphemy played when I saw them. And that's the song that they're... That's the song that they're playing here on this one. Uh, just a second to put this thing away. Uh, so yeah, I just got the two 7 inches, um, and I got a couple cassettes from Blasphemy's table as well. The first that I'm going to show you uh, is actually one of the, my favorite cassettes in my entire collection now. So it comes in this slip case, I believe you actually refer to these as O cards, uh, but uh, yeah, it's in this really nice slip case, and then when you pull it out, it's got this really fucking sweet ass artwork again on the inside, and it looked like a really DIY tape. Uh, when I pull it out, I can see how there's like a little bit of uh, ink kind of on the sides, which when it comes to cult pieces like this, I kind of like that it's a little bit DIY. So I was I was a bit optimistic on how it would sound, but man, it sounds fucking great. It sounds, you know, like a pro tape. And it does have like uh, some signs on it of uh, uh, markings anyway, that it says that it's like official Blasphemian uh, approved or something like that. What do they call it? under license from Blasphemian, so, and of course I got it from the band. I assume that that's some kind of a, that sigil there is some kind of a logo for the, the label that's putting it out. But anyway, I'm really happy about this one. It sounds like, uh, it must be like old recordings of them, and it reminds me a lot of like old Inquisition, but uh, much more on the death. If you put like a 60% more death metal to some old Inquisition, I mean, the vocals are a bit croakier here than, uh, like, what you would get on their more current stuff, like this album here, uh, Blasphemian, what is it, uh, Infernal Warriors of Death, and yeah, and this one's got all the fucking hits on it. This is a new pressing that just came out in conjunction with this particular event, because this being Blasphemian's first appearance uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, the local label... Head Split Records put out these tapes uh, in a red, the red that you're seeing here today, and there's also like a clearish black version. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you got all the lyrics. So yeah, these is put out through Head Split Records, uh, based out of Portland. Uh, you might know Dylan's band, Cemetery Lust. He's also a member of Necro Drunks. Uh, I forget the name of his latest. Uh, it's like it's a grindcore project called Hacksaw. Um, all great, great shit. Uh, he also puts out the Head Split magazines. Um, yeah, so this is Blasphemian's fucking holy grail right now. Uh, I believe they have a new album coming out next year, uh, that will fucking slay, uh, I guarantee it, and hopefully I can get a vinyl pressing of that, because I know that this is available on a red and black vinyl, the red being the diehard of this particular album on vinyl. The last thing I got, oh wait, no, there's more, uh, Matt Heffner actually gave me this, which is a CD of Morbosidad, uh, live in... Brazil. So yeah, the actual name of it is uh, Muerte de Cristo en Sao Paulo, Ao Vivo, No Brazilian Ritual, Fourth Attack. Uh, the best I could translate that Spanish is Death of Christ in Sao Paulo. Uh, I know Vivo means live or live. So yeah, it's just a live album. And the way that the track listings broke up in the back uh, leads me to believe that this is two sets. I don't know if it's like encore of the same show or if they just broke it up like that. But the whole, re the whole album is um, pretty solid, you know, uh, <coughs> blasphemous Morboso metal, as they call it. So this is actually the last thing I got from Blasphemian. Uh, the, their tour shirt, which here, let me pull it up for you. This is the back. And then uh, the front has this really nice artwork, which I'm not a 
I'm not 100% sure who did that artwork, but if I had to take a guess at it, I'd say Mr. Chris Moyen, that's what it looks like to me. I sure fucking hope so, because I have a copy. <laughs> I fucking love Chris Moyen artwork. Uh, so yeah, that's everything that I got from Blasphirian. And again, it's still early on, and I just fucking unloaded on Blasphirian's table. Uh, and the aforementioned Dylan from Headsplit Records uh, was the next place that I dropped some bones. Uh, first of all, I, I knew I wanted to pick up some tapes from him. He put out that um, new Blasphirian tape on Red, but I uh, picked it up from the band themselves uh, before I got to his table. But I knew I wanted to pick up another new release from him. I had seen this uh, on his website. Uh, this is Headless Death. Uh, I believe they're from Australia. Um, the head, uh, head Split Records just put out this cassette. cassette. A Hideous Warning is the title of it. Uh, this is like some more grindcore. Uh, it's just super fun. Super fun listen. Uh, it's not something, you know, you know, great, uh, like, end of the year list kind of stuff, but it is a fucking super fun, fucking great record or cassette here. Put out their Head Split Records. So, yeah, if you like grindcore, I would definitely recommend this one. It's super fun, and it's... It's, it's brand new. I mean, you can go listen to it, obviously. See if you like it. Um, but, yeah, I highly recommend picking up a copy of Headless Death. Uh, and then the next thing I got from him uh, was this blood tape he had. This is the first blood. Uh, obviously, the evolution of the band got better. Uh, so this this is a kind of a humorous release. Uh, the, the music, you know, sounds very, very um, grindy, death metal, but the lyrics are not fully established, opposed to, you know, the later sounds that he would get. A lot of times it sounds like he's just going, roar, <laughs> and I don't know if that's just, you know, uh, you know, they're from Germany, you know, maybe it's that German dialect coming through the way he, that, that he talks, but uh, it's just a lot of times it sounds like he's just going, roar. And uh, then, uh, like I said, I knew I wanted to pick up three tapes from Head Split Records, from Dylan. Um, and so the third tape I picked up was Undergang. Uh, I just discovered Undergang this year with their release of Misanthropology. Uh, one of the greatest death metal releases of this year, no doubt. You probably already know about it because it's so fucking great. But this is, uh, again, the, the first Undergang release uh, put out on a yellow tape. This is released through... Let's see, put this sucker out. Extremity Rotten. Extremely Rotten. Extremely Rotten Productions. So yeah, they're from Denmark. Get a little, a couple band photos. And, uh, you know, all their lyrics are in a foreign language, so... It's more of a, of a sound, but these guys just have such a rotten, filthy, death metal sound. Total death. I got one more thing before I left that show. Uh, I picked up this copy of Head Split Records. It was the last copy he had. I believe this particular issue, issue number 11, uh, there was only 44 copies made. Uh, so I don't know that you can still get this, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there will be more Head Split uh, magazine releases in the future, and there may be some in, available now on the, the Head Split Records website. But what I was the most happy about was that it came with this poster of Imprecation, who I'd seen that night. Uh, there's David Herrera, the fucking amazing frontman I was talking about. And, uh, and if, you, if that's a little too heavy for you, of course they've got this Iron Angel band. So yeah, whichever you like. But I, I just thought it was really cool that it came with that. And I know I said that was my favorite thing it came with, but this is super nice too. It came with this really nice quality patch. I mean, you can see it's got the, the felt back, I believe that's what it is, and uh, just a really nice printed patch. And it will be going on my vest. My wife's sewing me a vest, and whenever the day comes that it's finished, uh, that, among other really cool pins and stuff that you might see around my room all the time. So yeah, this magazine, I was really, really, really happy that I picked up this particular issue because so many of the bands that I saw that night are listed in here, uh, like Fetid, I know for sure, there's a in, there's an interview with, with uh, David from Implication, there's like a four-page interview with Matt Hefner, uh, and other great bands, and there's even 